our Redeemer Died on the cross Died for the sinner Paid all his due All who receive Need never fear For he will pass Will pass over you When I When I See the blood See the blood When I When I See the blood See the blood When I When I See the blood See the blood I will pass I will Good afternoon everyone. Uh, I want to greet you in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's another wonderful time that God has given to us that we may continue from where we left. And uh, last time I was talking about the only hope that the world has and that is Jesus Christ. I don't know how polite I could have placed this but uh, I, 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 I just want to say that if you don't have Jesus Christ then you are, you are doomed no matter who you are. If you don't have Jesus Christ, then you are bound to perish, no matter who you are. Because the Bible says in the book of Ephesians that at that time, when you are without Christ, you are strangers. So according to God, someone who don't have Jesus Christ is a stranger. You may have gained many things in the world. You may have gained many knowledge in the world. You may have acquired many wealth in the world. You may have acquired many possessions in the world. But if you don't have Jesus Christ, you are bound to, 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 be, to perish. You are bound to, to, to be destroyed destroyed. To, you are a stranger in the eyes of God. And that is why I would want to urge each and everyone that let us connect ourselves with Jesus Christ. Today I want to talk about uh, another topic. Uh, and this topic is, uh, do you have the mark of God upon you? The entire world is celebrating the, 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 the Passover festival. And uh, I would want just to bring to your attention the most important part of the Passover, that is having a mark of God upon you. And uh, because of this, I would read a scripture in the book of Exodus chapter 12, uh, verse 13. And if you are together with me, I would just request you to read the Bible together with me in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, verses uh, 13. And uh, the Bible says like this, Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Uh, we've just had a very beautiful uh, worship by our brother who is talking about when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will pass over you. That was a very wonderful worship in line with the word of God. And today I want to talk about having a mark of God upon you. Do you have a mark of God upon you? When we read the Bible, we can see many instances where God brought a plague upon the world because of one or two reasons. We may see instances where God brought judgment upon the world because of one or two reasons. And then the most important thing that we would see in the Bible is that whenever God would bring a plague or whenever God would bring a judgment upon the world, he would also prepare a path of salvation against that plague. He will also prepare a path of salvation against that judgment. When you read the book of uh, Genesis chapter 7, you will meet with God passing a judgment upon the world that is going to destroy the world with water. But in the process of passing that judgment, God spoke with Noah to prepare an ark. So the ark was for the salvation 
of people against the judgment of flood. When you read the book of Genesis chapter 7 verse 23, which I would really want to read for us to understand this, uh, the Bible says like this, Genesis chapter 7 verse 23, if you are together with me, I pray that you follow it up. The Bible says, so he destroyed all things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained. So the Bible says the destruction was upon everything upon the face of the earth. But the only people or the only things that were saved were not saved by themselves, were not saved for anything about themselves, were not saved through anything that is concerning themselves. But everything that was saved was saved because they were inside the ark. So it is the ark that remains. And everything that was inside the ark, they remained because they were inside the ark. So God prepared the ark for the salvation against the judgment of the flood. So when you look at the Bible, at every given time, God would bring a judgment, God would bring a plague, and at the same time, God would prepare a path of salvation, and he would give a, that path of salvation to man. So when you look at this scenario, Noah is saved, the family of Noah is saved, all the animals that are in the ark are saved, not because of anything about themselves. But because the ark was able to, 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 to prevent them from destruction. But all other things were destroyed. I would talk about many other instances in the Bible. We have a lot of instances in the Bible. But because of time, I would go direct to the point, that, to our topic of today. In our topic of today, we are seeing a second instance where God is passing judgment upon the land of Egypt. And God brought many different plagues to compel Pharaoh to release his people. But all these plagues, still Pharaoh's heart were hardened. And the Bible says it was God that had hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Because God wanted to reveal himself. God wanted to show his power against Pharaoh. So the last and most dangerous plague was just about to come to the land of Egypt. And that is the plague of the angel of slaughter passing through the land of Egypt, killing every firstborn in the land of Egypt. So this angel was to pass through the land of Egypt and killing every firstborn. In the land of Egypt, every firstborn were to die. It doesn't matter whether they are the firstborns of Egyptians. It doesn't matter whether they are the firstborns of the Jews, of the Hebrews. It doesn't matter whether they are the firstborn of which kind. But according to the judgment of God, the firstborns were to die. But in that scenario, God prepared a path of salvation. And he told Moses that Moses, go and tell my people, the angel will not be able to distinguish who is a Jew and who is an Egyptian. But this, this, this is the path that I am giving you for your salvation. Go and slaughter a lamb. Go and kill a lamb without blemish. And then you will eat this lamb. But there's something that I want you to do. After killing the lamb, I want you to take the blood. And you smear the blood upon the doorpost. You smear the blood upon the doorposts. When you smear the blood upon the doorpost, it is a mark of salvation. So the blood upon the doorpost was the mark of salvation. People were to be saved through the mark of the blood at the doorpost. That is why the Bible says, 
And God is telling Moses, when I will send the angel to the land of Egypt, when he will be passing around, he will, pa he will be passing around with a sword to slaughter. But whenever he will see the blood at the doorpost, he will pass over. He will not enter to destroy. He will not enter to kill the firstborn. But he will pass over. It doesn't matter who was inside the house. The house that is already marked with the blood at the doorpost. It doesn't matter whether the child of the, of the Egyptian is inside that house. It doesn't matter even if the son of Pharaoh himself was in one of the houses that was marked by the blood at the doorpost. That son could not have died because God had provided a path of salvation. And that path of salvation was the blood at the doorpost. God had given a promise. I will pass over whenever I see the blood. I will not enter to destroy it. That was the mark of salvation that God had given. You know, when Joshua was going to destroy the land of Jericho, there was a prostitute that had helped the spies. And then there was a promise that the spies had given to this woman. We will be moving around killing people and destroying people around. But you will have to tie at the window. You have to tie a mark at the window. There was a mark that this woman was to tie at the window. We will use that mark to identify that you and all your people are inside that house. There is always a mark of salvation upon the life of man whenever God gives a judgment. God will not just destroy. But when he plans a destruction, God will always provide a path of salvation. It is only men who will, dest who will reject. So God is saying, go and prepare a lamp that is blemish, that is blameless. You shall slaughter it and you shall eat it. But the most important thing, you will take the blood and you will smear the blood upon the doorpost. And that blood will be for a mark of salvation. I will see that mark and I will not enter to destroy. I will see that mark and I will pass over. I will pass over because already in that house, judgment has been made. Already in that house, the lamp has taken the judgment. Already in that house, the lamp has already died. Has already died on behalf of the firstborns. Already in that house, there's no firstborn that will ever die. Because the lamp had already died. The lamp had already died. Today, I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, there is a mark of salvation. All this that we are talking about in the Old Testament, they were just but a shadow. All this, the, 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 the ark of Noah was the shadow of Jesus Christ. The lamp that was slaughtered during the time of the, of, of, of the destruction of the firstborn in the land of Egypt. It was a shadow. It was a shadow of Jesus Christ. Today, God has given a true mark of salvation. And that true mark of salvation is Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what plague will fall upon the land. It doesn't matter what plague will fall upon the, the land. It doesn't matter what plague will fall upon the world. Be it the plague of coronavirus. Be it the plague of whatever you can call it. Be it the judgment of whatever can come. But God has given a judgment and God has given a mark of salvation. God has given a path of salvation and that path of salvation is Jesus Christ. God wants all of us to, to have Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the Father judges no one and he has committed the judgment upon Jesus Christ. Anyone who rejects Jesus Christ Ah, the reason why God brought Jesus Christ, I want to read a scripture in the book of jo John chapter 3 verse 17. And the verse that always blesses my heart so much. The Bible says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The reason of Jesus coming into this world is for the salvation of the world. 
Salvation against everything that will fall upon the world. It is salvation upon your sin. You who is still stuck in your sin. You is still a slave of sin. Jesus has come for the salvation of your sin. It is for the salvation of every plague that will fall upon the land. It is for the salvation of every judgment that will fall upon the land. Jesus is for the salvation of every situation that will fall upon the land. You believe in Jesus and Jesus will become a true mark of salvation in your life. I want to tell you one thing. You can die with coronavirus. I want to have pity for all those who died with coronavirus. I want to plead for the mercies of God upon the families that have lost their loved one through coronavirus. But I want to tell you that even through coronavirus, death is death. There's no death that is good. There's no death that is bad. People die out of a road accident. People die out of normal sickness. People die out of all other kinds of situation. Death is death. Even the death of coronavirus is death. But I want to tell you today that even if you die inside of Jesus Christ, you shall live again because death has no power over Jesus Christ. Death has no ability over Jesus Christ. So what, whatever it is, as much as you have the mark of God upon you, and that mark is Jesus Christ, as much as you have the mark of God upon you, and that mark is the work that Jesus accomplished at the cross of Calvary, as much as you have the mark of Jesus Christ upon you, you will not be subjected to any destruction. This body can die, but you will live again. The body can die because it must die and go back to where it came from, because it is a dust. But if you have Jesus Christ, you will live and you will live forever. I want to finish this sermon. Read with me one scripture. John chapter 11 verse 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe in this? Jesus is saying a very, very complicated statement to the world. The statement of Jesus is such a complicated statement. But he is asking, will you believe? Because he's saying, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, I am the resurrection, I am the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, though he may die, he will live. And then he's saying, and those who believe in me and they live, they shall never die. Because death can never have dominion over Jesus Christ. So those who have Jesus Christ will never die. This body can go back to where it came from. When you read the book of Thessalonians, the Bible says, there are, we have two different categories of the people who die. There are people who die in Christ. The Bible says, and those who die in Christ shall rise. We talk about people who die in Christ are the people who, their body can die, but their soul is alive with Christ. But we have those whose bodies are alive, but their soul is dead, even though they are living. So we have walking dead. Many people are walking, but they are dead because their soul is dead before God. Anyone who does have Jesus Christ is a dead soul. Anyone who doesn't believe in Jesus is a dead soul. It doesn't matter who you are. Do you have a mark of God upon you? And that mark of God is Jesus Christ. Do you have Jesus Christ upon you? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I want to request you. I want to plead with you. As an ambassador of Christ. As though Christ himself were beseeching you. As though it's Christ himself was pleading with you. I beseech you on Christ's behalf. Believe in Jesus. Be reconciled with God by believing in Jesus. May God bless you for this wonderful time. Until next time, we are going to have another session. For all this time that you have, believe in Jesus. 
trust in Jesus, take care of all of yourself, take precautions, the containment measures of COVID-19, be very vigilant with yourself, but believe in Jesus. May God bless you all. Until next time. When I, when I see the blood, see the blood I will pass, I will pass over you. He said, when I, when I see that precious blood,